Hi, my name's Emma. I'm the School and Youth Programs Manager at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, and I'm here today for another Art in Action Beam Up From Home. Today we're going to be talking about clay. So I think when a lot of us think about clay, we think about um, kind of traditional ceramics. So taking earthenware, stoneware, or porcelain, shaping it by hand or on a wheel, and then firing it in a kiln, baking it at a really high temperature to make something um, as strong and sturdy as the dishes in your cabinet, um, the tiles on your wall or floor, um, or even you know, the porcelain toilet that's in your bathroom. Um, ceramic is a really durable material, um, but if you're interested in working with clay at home and you don't have the specialized materials um, of a kiln or an ability to work um, with clay in a way that's easy to clean up because it can get really messy. Um, I've got some ideas for alternatives you can do at home, um, supplies you can buy at the store um, like polymer clay or oil-based clay, um, as well as um, play-doh or salt dough that you can make at home and get that same experience of um, building a sculpture or a functional object um, without going through all of the hassle or having access to all the resources that traditional ceramics take. Okay, so we're going to talk about some different types of clay or clay-like materials that you can use when you're making sculptures or functional objects at home, and I'm just going to talk through some of the differences between them. So with ceramic, um, that's what really what you're thinking of when you think of kind of traditional um, clay materials. So earthenware, stoneware, porcelain, those are all naturally occurring clays. Uh, it's very similar to the natural minerals um, the kind of dirt-like stuff that you would get out of the ground and, and make ceramics with. So um, if you are lucky to live near a clay deposit, maybe a riverbed or a lake where you can dig clay, um, that's fantastic and you can and you can use that. Um, it might have some contaminants in it that you would have to get out, like little um, plant material. So all of these types of ceramic would be um, baked at a very high temperature, um, and kilns are the tools that you use for that. Um, they're way, way hotter than a standard oven. Um, but because of how hot the material is and how much um, moisture is leaving the material, it does change shape. You, your ceramics will shrink a bit, and so that's something to take into consideration when you're working with it. Um, and that's also an advantage to some of these alternatives to ceramic is that um, you might be able to have a material that um, doesn't have this need for a high temperature oven and it also wouldn't change shape as much. So um, the two main alternatives that I think of are oil-based clay and polymer clay. So oil-based clay is um, the same as ceramic is often earthenware or stoneware that just has um, oils added to it um, and plasticine is kind of the the primary example of that, but there are other types. Um, and the idea there is that um, it would not need to be baked. It actually can't be baked. The oil prevents it from drying out. Um, and it's really great for being able to reuse because if your clay is not drying at all, um, you can kind of re- work sculptures over and over again. Um, and if you're making claymation, um, that's all about reworking your same sculptures all over again, moving them around. Um, so that's really great to know about oil-based clay. With polymer clay, I actually have um, clay here in quotation marks because there's no clay that's part of it. Um, ceramic and oil-based clay use natural materials, but um, polymer clay is all synthetic. And you would find that type of thing, um, like oil-based clay, you'd find it at a craft store. So the brands that you might be familiar with would be like Fimo or Sculpey, um, but there are many others. And um, they come in many different colors and um, some different textures. But the thing that's really great about polymer clay is that uh, you bake it at a very low temperature. You can bake it in your kitchen oven. I think it's around like 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it's a temperature that you can get to really safely in your home kitchen. Um, and there's very little shrinkage. It might be really great for making things like uh, miniatures or jewelry. Um, it can be quite expensive, so you probably want to use it in small amounts. Um, but it is um, pretty flexible in terms of that needing, being able to bake it at home and um, not needing to accommodate for shrinkage. And then we have Play-Doh or salt dough. So um, you can go out and buy Play-Doh um, at a craft store, um, but 
Play-Doh and Salto are also things you can make at home. Um, Play-Doh is a mixture of oil, flour, salt, water, and cream of tartar. Um, and salt dough is usually just salt, flour, and water. And so either of those materials um, you can make in your kitchen safely. Um, they won't last as long, and they certainly won't um, bake into something really permanent the way that ceramic would. Um, but it's a nice way to kind of avoid a trip to the craft store and um, being able to make things just from your kitchen. On the whole, they're really great, especially if you're working with kids um, and Play-Doh, I would say is more similar to oil-based clay in that um, you can reuse it, um, rework it, uh, great for claymation, you're not going to bake it, whereas salt dough is kind of the at-home equivalent, uh, I would say probably closer to polymer clay in that um, you can bake it like bread in your oven and um, you can create things that way. All right, so we hope you enjoyed learning about some different types of clay and clay-like materials you can use at home. Uh, next time I'll show you um, some air dry clay and talk about easy techniques that you can do with no tools at all.